everybody! Welcome to the Jaded Stitches Show! If you like to entertain your friends and family for a meal, chances are you also like to occasionally set a pretty little table. So today we have a little bit of crochet table love for you. We've designed these really cute, round, pretty little doily inspired placemats. These are about a little over 12 inches in diameter, so about 31 centimeters, and it's designed like a charger plate, so when you put your dinner plate down on top of it, all the pretty little petal points show around the edge of the plate. I love these. I like doilies, but sometimes doilies don't quite work out for a place setting because they're so fine. So when you make it out of something thicker, like this worsted weight cotton yarn that I used, it gives you a little more oomph, acts like a placemat. So if you use cotton, it's heat resistant, so that'll protect the uh, table from whatever hot food you might have on the plate. And it's a little more substantial. Plus, cotton washes really well, so if you spill a little sauce on it, you can just toss them in the washing machine after the party's over. <laughs> These look really cute outside as well as inside. So if you're entertaining outside on the patio, you can make a set of those for that as well. And that's really all I'm going to say about it. These whip up really quick. You'll have a set of four done in no time. And um, yeah, so let's jump right into the tutorial. Grab your hooks, grab your cotton yarn, let's head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up some placemats together. These place mats work out to be about 12 inches, a little over 12 inches from one point across to the other point. That's about 31 centimeters. I'm using a worsted weight yarn in cotton. This is a size four. And I like cotton for things like a place mat because it is heat resistant, whereas plastics are not. You're going to need a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and we're using a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I-9. So once you've got all those together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And then we're going to chain four. You're going to join to the first chain with a slip stitch to make a circle. And make sure you can get sort of your finger tip in there so you can sort of see your circle. I'm going to work over my little short tail, but you can leave yours out and weave it in later if you like. You're going to chain one, and you're going to work six single crochets into that circle. So make sure you work into the circle. You want to work six single crochets all the way through that circle. Once you've worked six single crochets into your circle, find the first one and slip stitch to it to join. That creates your solid circle. We're going to chain one. We're going to use the half double crochet stitch now and we're going to use the false stitch. So this stitch here that the chain one comes out of looks like a full stitch. It's actually the false stitch. <laughs> so we're going to half double crochet into the same place that we just joined in. So right here. And now we're going to work two half double crochets into each of the next five stitches. And that'll take you right up to the false stitch. So two half double crochets in each of the next five stitches. And when we get to the false stitch, I'll show you what to do then. So you've worked a half double crochet in the same stitches joining, two half double crochets in each of the next five stitches. That leaves you with this stitch here, which is sometimes called the false stitch. It's the one that sits at the base of the chain one half double crochet into it, you'll now have 12 half double crochets in total all the way around. You can join with a slip stitch to the first one and there are no gaps so you should have a nice even 12 half double crochets in a circle. Chain 5. So this chain 5 counts as a double crochet plus 2 chains. You're going to double crochet into the next stitch, so not the same stitches joining, right into the next stitch. chain two, and repeat. Double crochet into the next stitch, and chain two. You're going to repeat this in every stitch all the way around until you have 12 double crochets and 12 chain two spaces. So you just have to count your chain three counts. Remember, count these. You want to have 12 of them plus 12 chain two spaces all the way around, and that is row three. 
you should find that your last double crochet chain two is being worked into the false stitch or the stitch right at the bottom of where your chains came out of to begin row three. Don't forget your last two chains and then you want to count up one, two, three to the third chain in that chain five that you made to begin with and join with a slip stitch to that third chain. And you should have something that looks like this. We're into row four. Chain three. And now you're going to double crochet three times into that big chain two space. So right into the space, you don't have to grab any stitches. Work three double crochets into it. Double crochet into the next stitch. So that'll be the top of this double crochet from the previous row. And then three double crochet into the next space. And that's the repeating pattern all the way around. You're going to double crochet into the top of every stitch and work three double crochets into every space all the way around. And at the end of row four, you're going to have 48 stitches. At the end of row four, you'll have 48 stitches. That includes your chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Find the top of it and join with a slip stitch. Row five, chain three to begin. This counts as a double crochet. You're going to double crochet into the same stitch that you joined in. So that little thing right there, that counts as two. And then you're going to double crochet into the next three stitches. So one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And now we're going to begin our repeater pattern. So it's two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next three. You're going to repeat that all the way around for row five, and at the end of row five, you'll have 60 stitches. You should find that your 60th stitch falls here and that you're not using your false stitch. But your false stitch should look a little bit covered anyway because of the two double crochets or the chain three double crochet we worked into the joining. So it's not going to show the gap, I mean. <laughs> you want to join with a slip stitch to the top of your chain three. You should have 60 stitches at the end of row five. We're on to row six. We're going to chain five, so another row of open work. This chain five counts as a double crochet, chain two. Skip the next stitch, find the stitch after that, and double crochet into it. Chain two, skip a stitch, find the next stitch, double crochet. Chain two, find the next stitch and skip it, find the next stitch and double crochet into it. And that's the repeating pattern. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. And you'll have 30 of these little double crochets and 30 chain two spaces all the way around when you're done row six. Your last double crochet chain two will be worked into the second last real stitch. You're going to ignore the false stitch, this one at the bottom of your chain three. So that's your last stitch, skip over it, Join to the top of the chain three, so count up three stitches or three chains in that chain five you began with, and join with a slip stitch, and you should have something that looks like this. You've got 30 of these little double crochets and 30 chain two spaces all the way around. Row seven. We're going to chain three. This counts as a double crochet. Work two double crochet into the chain two space. and then double crochet in the top of the next stitch, which will be the double crochet from the previous row, and work two double crochet into the chain two space. So that's all you have to do around for row seven. Double crochet into the top of every stitch, and work two double crochet into every chain two space. And at the end of row seven, you'll have 90 stitches. At the end of row seven, you should have 90 stitches. You've worked your last two double crochet into that chain two space. Find the top of the chain three and slip stitch to join. 
you should have something that looks like this now. A bit of a big wagon wheel. <laughs> and we are moving on to row eight. Chain three to begin. Chain three counts as a double crochet. Work another double crochet into the same stitch that you joined in. So find that little space. So that counts as two double crochet in the same stitch. And now you're going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So make sure you get that next stitch. It might look a little funny. Don't miss it. And you're double crocheting into the next five single stitches. And that's the repeater pattern. Two double crochet into the next stitch. and double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So at the end of row eight, you'll have 105 stitches. At the end of row eight, you should have 105 stitches. You're not gonna use your false stitch. You're gonna skip over it. You're gonna find the top of that chain three and join with a slip stitch. So that's 105 stitches. And you should have something that looks like that. We are now going to change up the way we do our pattern because we are going to start making these little pointed petals across the top. So there's two rows that get built into the pointed petals and here we go. Row nine. We are not chaining one. This slip stitch that we joined the previous row with counts as a slip stitch for this row. Instead, you're going to double crochet immediately into the next stitch. It's a bit tight. Make sure you get the right one. Double crochet into the next two stitches. So that's a slip stitch that counts. Double crochet into the next three stitches. Chain two. And double crochet into the next three stitches. We're not skipping any stitches. We're just putting a chain two in between sets of three double crochet. Find the next stitch and slip stitch into it. Make your slip stitches a little on the loose side because you want to be able to use them in the next row. And you should have something that looks like this. Slip stitch, double, 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 two chains, double, 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 slip stitch. Double crochet into the next three stitches. Chain two. Don't skip anything. Double crochet into the next three stitches. And then slip stitch. Keep it nice and loose. And that's all you're gonna do all the way around. So each little petal begins with a slip stitch and then you go double, 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 chain two, don't skip anything, double, 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 slip stitch. Once you get all the way around, you should have 15 petals. At the end of row nine, you should have 15 of these little petals forming. So in the between, in the middle of every petal will be a little chain two space. And once you're finished your 15th petal, you're going to slip stitch into the same slip stitch or the join from the previous row. So you're slip stitching right into that. And that completes row eight. So you should have 15 of these little petals started. I'm sorry, that's row nine you finished. <laughs> and you'll have 135 stitches all the way around. And those stitches include your chain twos and your slip stitches. But more importantly, you should have 15 even petals. Row 10, final row. We are not chaining. We are counting this slip stitch as a slip stitch for this row as well. You're going to single crochet immediately into the next three stitches, which will also be the tops of those double crochets from the previous row. So single crochet into each of those stitches. When you get to a chain two space, you're going to do the following. Single crochet, chain two, and single crochet all into the same space. Then you want to make sure you single crochet into the next three stitches going down the other side of the pedal. Pull back your work in the chain two to make sure you can get the top of that first stitch. You don't want to miss it because it'll throw off the look of your petal. 
So you single crochet into those other three double crochet stitches going down the other side of the petal. And when you get to the slip stitches in between each petal, you're going to slip stitch into them. That's why I said you want to keep them loose because you want to be able to work them. Single crochet into every double crochet from the previous row. Work single crochet, chain two, single crochet in every chain two space, single crochet into the top of every double crochet going back down the other side of every petal, and then when you get to the chain, or I should say the slip stitch in between, slip stitch into that slip stitch. You're going to do that all the way across for every single petal so that your petals end up getting this nice little pointed bit at the top. All right, I'll let you handle that. That's your last row and I'll see you back at the beginning. When you've worked your last single crochet of row 10, you'll be back round to that slip stitch that you joined the previous row with and like the row before that, you want to slip your hook under it and slip stitch to it. And that is it. You can grab your scissors, snip your yarn, fasten off, and grab your yarn needle and weave in your tail. So I like to flip it over to the other side and then just weave it back and forth underneath some of the single crochets that I made in the last row. And I'm going to do that back and forth a couple times because this is sort of a, a nice grabby cotton. It doesn't want to unravel. So I can go out one direction and then skip over top of a piece of a stitch, of the little last bit of a stitch that I came out with, and then go back through the same stitches. And that will pretty much lock my little tail into place. Now, you can block it if you want. We'll put a link in the description box down below of how to steam block or wet block, especially if you're giving these away as gifts. That always makes everything look a lot nicer. But there you go. That is a doily placemat or two. <laughs> and there you go. One pretty little round doily inspired placemat. Perfect for a charger plate and your summer entertaining, your winter entertaining, pretty much any kind of entertaining you've got to do that requires a little bit of pizzazz on your dinner table. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week. And remember, if you're giving a set of these as a gift, you might want to consider blocking them too. And we've done videos on how to block your projects in the past, and we'll put links to both of them in the description box down below. Is this the first doily inspired project you guys have ever made? Have you made other kinds of doilies? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments down below if you have. And we will see you again very soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>